Yo, what's up guys, AFC Adino here and welcome to a new video. Uh, today we are going to continue the series How to Become a Better PvPer on PokeMMO. Today's topic is going to be how to choose a lead. This is a question I'm getting a lot from you guys and it's such a difficult question to answer as well. <laughs> but yeah, um, basically for all my guides it's quite difficult explaining uh, just because there's no real theory on this, like there's no book with a step-by-step -step guide on how to do all of this. Um, basically, um, I'm creating my own uh, the theory, my own terms as well. <laughs> like status inducer, for example, in the team building guide. And I'll do this for this video as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult making up my own theory, but uh, for this, of course, we need the glasses because the professor is back <laughs> but anyway guys uh, today's topic how to choose a lead and yeah choosing which pokemon to start uh with at the beginning of a battle is not always easy and there's no one size fits all answer it depends on what pokemon your opponent has and to choose a good lead you also need a lot of knowledge about the game however though to provide you with a guideline that you can follow until you find your own way to approach choosing a lead, I have created a six step strategy to help you choose your lead Pokemon in your battles. Here are the first steps. Step one, identify the threats from both parties. Step two, consider how each player defends against each other's Pokemon. Step three, Determine which situation you desire and what you and what you want to avoid. Step 4. Assess which player gains more value if both situations happen. Step 5. Advise how you punish your opponent for attempting the action you don't want to happen. Step 6. Plan your response in case your initial lead proves to be unfavorable. Well, by these steps, you can make a more informed decision when selecting your lead Pokemon. Yeah, I'm gonna have some. Uh, I'm gonna have some gameplay in the background. I will probably remove myself. And yeah, we're gonna talk about the six steps. Then I'm going to show you guys an example. And then I'm just showing you. And I'm going to show you guys a few, or actually explain a few um, lead strategies. And lastly, I will end up with more, a couple of more examples of me uh, choosing my lead in my battles. So if that sounds interesting, guys, let's hop right into it let's go step one identify the threats from both parties first you need to know your team very well and you also need to know what the pokemon on your opponent's team can do if you didn't build if you didn't build your team um take some time to study each pokemon's abilities items and moves until you know all the details once you know your team and have an understanding of what your team, what your opponent's Pokemon are capable of, ask yourself these four questions. First, which Pokemon can deal a lot of damage to my team? Then, do I have a Pokemon with moves that are super effective against multiple Pokemon on the opposing team? Next, do I have a Pokemon with a move that my opponent does not have a resistance to? And the last one. Does my opponent have Pokemon with moves that are super effective against multiple of my Pokemon? With this information, you can estimate what the threats are on both sides. Now ask yourself the following things. First off, think about what the threats, uh, what threats you and your opponent might have. That way, you can come up with a plan to defend against them. Also, figure out which Pokemon you'll use to damage your opponent's team. Once you've got all this info, you can create a game plan. And this is super important. It's even more important than choosing which Pokemon you're going to start with. But yeah, we'll go more in, more de more we will go into more detail uh, about game plans in the future. In a future guide. But for now, just remember that to be prepared and think ahead, guys. Step two. Consider how each player defends against each other's Pokemon. Okay, 
Now that we have talked about identifying the threats in a Pokemon battle, it's time to focus on a general way to choose a lead. Think about the threats on both sides. Which player has an easier time defending against the opponent's threats? If you have an easier time defending against your opponent's threats, then try to lead aggressively against your opponent. If not, then lead in a way that doesn't allow your opponent's biggest threat to do heavy damage on the first turn. Always think about in, in um, always think about in team preview which of my defensive Pokemon can I answer to his all his Pokemon. Step three: determine which situations you desire and what you want to avoid. Think about what you want to happen and what you don't want to happen. Some examples would be: I want. To get my Cordant in because every time I get a free attack something will die on my opponent's team. I don't want my opponent going for Stealth Rock because I have no way to remove them. I don't want his Tyranitar coming in for free because I will lose a Pokemon every time he attacks. Step 4. Assess which player gains more value if both situations happen in the same turn. If both players do choose to go for a damaging move, then one of them will take more damage. So the one who takes less damage gets more value. If both players get up Stealth Rock on turn 1, but the one player has multiple weakness to, weaknesses to it, then the other player gets more value. Step 5. Device how you punish your opponent for attempting the action you don't want to happen. Think about, can I prevent my opponent from doing this action? If not, how do I punish my opponent for doing so? How do I punish my opponent from setting up Stealth Rock? How do I punish my opponent for setting up Weather on turn 1? These are questions you have to ask yourself. The goal is to start the battle without being in an early disadvantage. Step 6. Plan your response in case your initial lead proves to be unfavorable. By looking back at step 2, you'll know how to defend against that specific Pokemon because you you um, you considered how you, how you were going to defend against each of the opponent's Pokemon, right? So you have to plan how you maneuver your opponent if it comes to that situation. With these six, six steps, um, you should generally be able to most of the times pick a lead. Um, I'm going to show you guys a video example of me choosing a lead like this. Okay guys, this is one of my battles I had a while back. Um, as you guys can see, I'm on the left side. My opponent is on the right side. I have Dragonite, Magnezone, Weavile, Swampert, Amoongus, and Mandibuzz. My opponent has a Rotom Wash, Superior, Excadrill, Dragonite, Tyranitar, and a Mamoswine. So, let's apply these six steps. Step 1. Identify the threats on both parties. So my threats are definitely going to be my Dragonite, alright? And it's going to be my Weavile. The reason is, my Weavile's Icicle Spear is only resisted by one of his Pokemon being Rotom Wash. Well, if you consider Thick Pet, it's two, but let's forget the ability for now. So it's only resisted by the Rotom Wash. Against the others, uh, against two of his Pokemon, it's actually super effective, and against the other, it's neutral. And neutral is still gonna hit hard because of the Choice Band and them being offensive Pokemon. My Dragonite. My Dragon Claw is only resisted by the Excadrill. It is a Choice Band of Dragonite with Dragon Claw. So he's going to hit extremely hard on my opponent. But those are going to be my biggest threats. His threats are Mamoswine and his Dragonite. Because Mamos uh, his Dragonite, I only have one uh, Dragon type resist, and that's my Magnezone. But yeah, my Magnezone is one of my offensive Pokemon. None of my defensive Pokemon actually resist this attack. However, if they are at full HP, they can take an attack and retaliate. As long as my Pokemon are at full HP, Dragonite doesn't instantly destroy me. But look at his Mamoswine. 
Mammoth Swine. His Ice type attacks are super effective against half of my team. The Dragonite, Among Us, and my Mandibuzz. I only have two resistances to his Ice type attacks, but those are my offensive Pokemon, not my defensive Pokemon. My Weavile is an Ice type resist, however, Weavile is super frail. If I switch into Icicle Crash or Icicle Spare with Weavile, I'm still going to take a lot of damage. I cannot repeatedly do this. Magnezone, same story. Magnezone is a bit bulkier than Weavile, so I can take a few. But I have no recovery on my Magnezone, and my Magnezone is weak to, to uh, Mammoth Swine's Earthquake. He has multiple attacks that are super effective against my team. So Mammoth Swine is actually a bigger threat than my Weavile and my Dragonite. Okay, now step two. Consider how each player defends against defends against each other's Pokemon. So how I would defend against my opponent is against his Rodan Wash, I do have my Among Us. Against his Superior, I do have my Mandibus, I do have my Among Us. Against his Excadrill, I do have my Among Us to weaken them a bit. I do have Mandibus, which can weaken them a bit. And I do have Swampert, of course, which can go for a super effective water type in return. Um, his Dragonite. Don't have a, I don't have a resist or immunity. However, like I mentioned, if Among Us is at full HP, I can at least retaliate with something. So it has to be the um, combination Among Us. My Mandibus can take two hits and retaliate with foul play, and Swampert can retaliate with a nice type attack and live live to Dragon Claws. Um, his Tyranitar. I do have my Swampert. I do have my Mag. I do have my Among Us. And Magnezone can help me a bit as well. Um, but his Mamoswine, how do I defend against Mamoswine? Mandibus is gonna die to Icicle Crash or whatever. Among Us is gonna die to the Icicle Crash. Like, I cannot switch Among Us in too, because then he just. He, he, I cannot switch it into Earthquake because he's gonna die to Icicle Crash. Again. And Mandibus is also gonna die to Icicle Crash. But my only Pokemon that, can, that I can switch in is the Swampert. It's not my only defensive answer, but remember, my Swamper doesn't have recovery. So, I can only switch him in a limited amount of time, even though it's one of my defensive Pokemon. Yeah, that's step two. Um, we considered how we are going to defend against each of his Pokemon. Now, step three. Determine which situation you desire and what you want to avoid. So, I am looking, I am looking for opportunities to get in my, my biggest threat, my Dragonite and Dragon Claw my opponent. What I want to avoid is uh, his Mammoth Swine coming in on Pokemon that can kill me, uh, on Pokemon he can kill, and then uh, me taking a lot of damage with my Swampert, for example. That's what I want to avoid. And since his threat is bigger, is a bigger threat than my threat, um, I soon have to decide how I'm going to lead. But uh, we're going to step four. Assess which player gains more value if both situations happen in the same turn. So if I get in my Dragonite and he gets in his Mammoth Swine, he gets more value. Because his Mammoth Swine will destroy my Dragonite. So he gets more value. So step 5 is devise how you punish your opponent for attempting the action you don't want to happen. So how can I punish my opponent for leading off with Mammoth Swine in case he does? So the only way I can do this is by... Bringing in my only Pokemon that can take hits from him and force him out in return by going for a water type attack, for example. And that's my Swampert. And step six plan your response in case your initial lead proves to be unfavorable. So, but that we also, we're also looking at how can he punish my Swampert lead. The only way he can punish my Swampert lead is by the superior. But in step two, we already determined that. We have Mandibus that can come in on Superior. There we go. And if it comes to this, we get a Mandibus and we, we U-turn to get a favorable uh, situation. So that's basically it. Um, and yeah, the way to punish the Mammoth Swine lead, like I said, if we had an offensive Pokemon that can kill him, uh, we could have gone for an offensive lead. Like in step, um, in step 5, right? The advice how you punish your opponent for attempting the... The action you don't want to happen 
But my only Pokemon that's faster is Weavile, and Weavile doesn't kill Mamoswine from full. So I cannot go that route, meaning that I have to go the Swampert route. So let's see what happens in this game, guys. I have myself unmuted, by the way. So my opponent leads up with Superior. I lead up with Swampert. So we avoided the situation, right? We avoided the situation in which Mamoswine gets to click something. And we already determined the, our step our step six, plan your response in case your initial lead proves to be unfavorable. So what we'll do is we switch here and we go into Man Mandy Buzz. Whatever he clicks, whatever he clicks, Leaf Store, Glare, whatever, we get in Mandy Buzz and then we U turn. So the only thing he can do to add players is double here into the Mamoswine. But yeah, you're not you're not playing against the computer guys. Your opponent can think as well. But I think this is a general good guideline to follow when you're leading up. And uh, uh, when you're choosing your lead. And if you're if you're starting out guys, if you are starting out, um if you are starting out then uh consider making a screenshot every time you get into team preview and apply these after the game, apply this uh these six steps and you'll eventually become better at, at deciding to choose a lead um but let's let's go back to this same example let's go back to the same example right however this time let's imagine let's imagine that this mammoth swine is a gengar now with gengar gone if we go to step two Consider how each player defends against each other's Pokemon. Against the Gengar, we have Mandy Buzz, which is specially defensive, which can U-turn into Weavile. Now it becomes a different ball game because his biggest threat is not here anymore. However, Gengar doesn't beat Weavile and Dragon and our Dragonite 1v1. So if we lead up with the Dragonite and he leads up with Gengar, he's gonna be in trouble. If he leads up with his Dragonite and I lead up with my Dragonite, he might be in trouble because I am Choice Bandit, so I have a bigger boost than him. Um, if he leads up with Tyranitar, I might be able to superpower him. If he leads up with Excadrill, I might be able to superpower him. See what I mean? Now suddenly my Dragonite becomes a big threat and now he needs to lead with something that doesn't allow my Dragonite to go crazy and maybe he has to go in maybe he has to lead into his Rotom with leftovers. But then we are going back to our plan six, right? Plan six is um what in case what what if the lead is unfavorable? So if he leads Rotom against my Dragonite, we can get in our Amoongus. We can get in our Amoongus and go from there, click Toxic, for example. Um th th in this case our our biggest threat is uh our threat is bigger than his biggest threat. Meaning that we can lead a bit more aggressively because we actually have more defensive answers. But yeah. <laughs> um, now let me talk a bit about um, some general uh, lead strategies you might come across. So yeah, guys, this is ju just a general way on how I approach my lead choice. Yeah, choosing a lead choice is still complex because there are many options and different team requirements. Uh, and different teams require different Pokemon to lead. And yeah, some leading strategies include moves like Trick Room or Stealth Rock, while other teams might need to set up their weather condition like Rain and, rain and Sun. But yeah, there are many strategies, like many leading strategies, but it's too much to explain in one video. However, I do want to talk about a few examples. The first example is the Stealth Rock lead. Um, this, with this strategy, uh, is a, a player will start with a Pokemon that can use Stealth Rock to make it harder for the opponent to switch throughout the game. However, when going for this strategy, you always have to think about how can my opponent punish opponent punish my Stealth Rock attempt? Because does he have a way? Does he have a Pokemon that can kill me if I try to get up rocks? Is he able? Is he able? Is he easily able to remove the rocks? Or is he able to prevent the rocks? 
And you also have to think this vice versa. So how do I punish my opponent for going for rocks? This is something you gotta think about, but yeah, this is Stealthrock lead. Um, some common Stealthrock lead Pokemon are Garchomp, Hippowdon, Ferrothorn, Bronzong, Skarmory. And that's the Stealthrock lead. Another strategy is the mid-ground lead. I call it I call it the mid-ground lead. I don't think it's a real term, but yeah, a mid-ground lead, it's a safer option if you're not sure how to lead. Because you basically lead with a fast or bulky Pokemon that has U-turn or, or Volt Switch. If your Pokemon is faster, you can go, you, you can go for U-turn or Volt Switch, uh, which allows you to switch into a Pokemon that can defend against the incoming attack while doing damage yourself. If you have a slower, bulkier Pokemon, you can tank the incoming attack first and safely bring in a Pokemon that can kill the attacking Pokemon. Some good choices for bulky, slow Pokemon are Rotom Wash, Manly Buzz, Pelipper, uh, Scizor, and Pokemon with the move teleport like Blissey and Porygon 2. Uh, good choices for fast Pokemon with U-turn or Volt Switch are Mianxiao, Infernape, Jolteon, Crobat, and other and Pokemon that use the item Choice Scarf in combination with U-turn or Volt Switch. That's the mid crown lead. Uh, another one of my favorite leads is the is the anti lead, and this is basically. Another strategy where you lead with a Pokemon that can deal a lot of damage in the first turn. This is a good option if you expect your opponent to do a certain action, like Stealth Rock, Trick Room, or setting up the weather on the first turn. You can basically take advantage of this by attacking with a strong, powerful move while your opponent is using a support Pokemon or move. Um, a good anti-lead Pokemon has a high attack or special attack stat and a good strong stab move, basically a move from their own typing. Examples include Mianxiao, Conkeldur, Chandelure, Crodon, Tyranitar, with moves like Close Combat, Overheat, Stone Edge, Super Power, Draco Meteor, very powerful moves. And lastly, um, this one is pretty common as well. Um, this is called the Suicide Lead, and this strategy involves a Pokemon that can set up support move on the first turn such as Teldrock, Tailwind, Trick Room, uh, Weather, whatever. These Pokemon are usually not intended to survive beyond the first turn and may carry a Focus Sash to help them survive a single hit. You'll see this a lot on Hyper Offense. Uh, some Suicide Elite Pokemon also have moves like Explosion, Memento or Final Gambit which can deal a lot of damage before fainting. And th this basically allows them to get in a Pokemon to switch in safely. Examples of Suicide Lead Pokemon are Aerodactyl, Electrode, Garchomp, Infernape, Skarmory, Metagross, Mamoswine. This is the Suicide Lead. Yeah guys, my tip for you is to focus on what you want and don't want to happen during a battle, instead of trying to predict your opponent's lead. If you're struggling with choosing a lead, always consider your defensive options. Here are some guidelines to help you avoid undesirable situations. The first one. If you're vulnerable to a particular Pokemon, lead with a Pokemon that can prevent your opponent from taking advantage of that weakness. Use a Pokemon that can either defeat the threat or defend against it. Um, the next one is. To prevent or punish your opponent from setting up Stealth Rock on the first turn, use a Pokemon that can handle the potential Stealth Rocker. You can defeat the Pokemon by doing a lot of damage on the first turn. The Anti-Lead. Or you can use Taunt to prevent it from setting up Entry Hazards or use Defog or Rapid Spin to remove it immediately. And the last one is, if you're worried about your opponent setting up Weather or Trick Room and you can't stop it, lead with an Anti-Lead. Pokemon that can deal significant damage. This way you can get a free kill or a lot of damage to be in a better position to handle the upcoming situations. Yeah guys, um, like I promised, I will go over a few of my matchups and uh, yeah, um, basically explain um, how we are going to lead. So let's go. Okay, everyone. So for this one, um, I had this battle a while back as well. I was using a Choice Bandit Berlin with Close Combat, which got newly re released. And playing against a pretty defensive team, a pretty defensive team, quite bulky team. 
But yeah, Sandrush Excadrill, of course. And for this game, um, the threats on my team were definitely my Berloom. Because if you look at Bullet, Bullet Seed, it's super effective against uh, Tyranitar. But it's only resisted by Mandibuzz, and it is a choice man and bullet seed. So even if it's even if it's not super effect effective, as long as it's neutral, it's still going to do a lot of damage. So his only only defending Pokemon against is the Mandibuzz. Um, for close combat on Berloom, it's gonna be his Kofagrigus and his Reuniclus. Um that can defend against this Pokemon. So he has he has a few answers against my Berloom. And as long as their Pokemon are at full HP, I cannot threaten them with a lead. So even though I do a lot of damage, it's not going to be the lead mon, but it's always good to determine which Pokemon are going to be uh, the threats. And then Weavile is going to be a threat as well, because look at my opponent's team. He doesn't have any Ice type resist on his team. Um, I, I have no super effective attacks with my Ice type attacks. My dark type attacks are super effective on Kofagrigus and Reuniclus. Actually, the ice type attack is effective on Mandibuzz. There's no resist to it. However, if Tyranitar and Conkeldur are at full HP, uh, then I don't have any pressure of killing them. Same goes for Kofagrigus yet. So I do need some damage as well. So even though they are huge threats, I cannot lead with them because um, I don't have anything in range yet. On my opponent's team, the threats are Unkeldar. Unkeldar could have a variety of moves, of course. If it's close combat, it has the potential to two-hit KO my Hippowden. Um, if it's Chair Force Ice Punch, it has the potential to two-hit KO Hippowden. If it's Bulk Up, he has the potential to beat me. So Unkeldar is definitely going to be the biggest threat. Uh, me defending against Excadrill is going to be my Hippowden as well. I always have Berloom in the back to mock punch him to revenge kill, of course. Um, I do have my Dragonite in the back as well, which is a defensive Dragonite, which is immune to Earthquake. And with the multi skill, I'm able to Flamethrower him. So those are my options. Against the Mandibus, I can bring in my defensive Scizor and get a slow U turn off to get a favorable situation with one of my threats. Um, against the Tyranitar, I do have Hippowden plus Mianxiao. Against the Reuniclus, I do have my Scizor. Against the Kofagrigus, I don't have a really good defensive answer, but I, I'll use Mianxiao to knock off his item. Don't really care if it gets burned. And then get in my Scizor as well to weaken him, get some U-turns off. Basically weaken him to a certain point. That's the idea. Um, so those are going to be my defensive ways. And yeah, against the Conkeldor, I will have to defensively answer with my Hippowden. But that's step two. Uh, step step three. Determine which situation you desire and what you want to avoid. Um, for now, I don't uh, need to avoid anything particularly. But I don't want him going for Stealth Rock turn one. That's the situation I want to avoid. Um, however, like I said, my, my Weavile and my Breloom are bigger threats to him, his team. So I can lead more aggressively. So in this in this case, because my my threats don't have the damage to one shot them from full, I have to go with a bit of a uh, mid ground approach. So we're going with our mid ground lead being our Mianxiao, because Mianxiao um, is bulky, and he U turns against his whole team. Aside from the Excadrill, uh, against the Excadrill we need to switch because we are a defensive uh, Mianxiao. So against the others we can U-turn. If Excadrill comes in, we already determined, right? We have Hippowden. If, Ex if he does lead up with the Excadrill. So basically, um, we are going for our own lead. And if you're going for your own lead, you can basically skip um, step 5. Because you already you already took that in consideration. Um, because he's not going to set up Stealth Rock against my Mian Shao with Tyranitar, for example. But well, let's see what happens in this battle. So I, I choose to lead off with Mian Shao and always think about the step 6. What do I do if an you know, unfavorable situation happens? That's only when he leads off with Excadrill. This time it doesn't happen. And in his case, 
he was probably afraid of me leading off with Berloom. Because I can spore something, right? I could spore something. I could technically spore something. So he was afraid of my Berloom. And this works out perfectly for me. Because like I mentioned, I'm going for the mid-ground lead here. I U-turn. I get the chip. And this is, this is for information. And like I mentioned, I have my scissor, which I can use to defensively answer against this many buzz. He brave birds into me. And he doesn't do too much damage to me because it's a freaking brave bird. And now I get the slow U-turn off. I get the slow U-turn off. And if he stays in, I get a slow U-turn off. Get in my Weavile, like I mentioned. Like I said, he brave birds again. So he gets me around half HP. However, now I get the U-turn off. It's not Rocky Helmet either. I get a lot of damage. And many bus is close to have. And like I mentioned, guys, uh, Berloom cannot Berloom cannot pick up a kill yet because I have to predict in this case. Because uh, he can go Covagrigus or Renaclus. However, like we mentioned in the beginning, if I can get in my Weavile and click Icicle Spear on him for free, because he has no resist, then uh, it would be a really good opportunity. So I get in my Weavile and look, he has no resist to Icicle Spear. Because even Tyranitar can take a lot. If he goes Kofagrigus, I might still get 5 hits, you know? If he goes Conkeldor, he's still going to take a lot of damage. And that's also weakening his his biggest threat, his Conkeldor, of course. So that's this example, the, the mid-ground lead. Now let's go on to the next example. So in this example, um, as you guys can see, if, if we look at the threats again, my Dragonite is going to be a huge threat to him because he, he only has one Dragon type resist. It's Choice Bandit Dragonite in, on this team, by the way. Uh, and his only Dragon type resist is Metagross. Um, offensively, my Weavile also does pretty well because his resist is going to be the Metagross and Cradon, but Cradon's defense and HP is really low. So he's going to take a lot of damage if he switches into Icicle Spear. So Dragonite and Weavile are going to be the biggest threats on my team. However, on his team, um, look at how we def defensively answer his team, right? Um, so we defensively answer superior through Weezing plus uh, plus Dragonite, essentially. A Conkeldor with our Weezing. We're not depending on his set, of course, but we have Empoleon. Which resists both his stab, but if he has close combat, we also have to include Weaval. Uh, we have to include Weezing. Elements, we do have our Empoleon. Uh, Volcarona, we do have our Dragonite, of course. We do have our Spedept Lyscor. Um, however, his Metagross is going to be the biggest threat. Because if Metagross gets a free attack off on me, which he... Because it can be a lot of sets. It can be Psychic, Sand Headbutt, whatever. It's going to do a lot to Weezing. It can be Ice Punch for our Gliscor. It's going to do a lot of damage. It can be Bullet Punch, Meteor Mesh, Hidden Power Fire, whatever, against our Weavile. Our Weavile cannot kill Metagross from full HP. And it can be Hammer Arm versus our Empoleon and Clefable. So if Metagross ever gets a free attack, his, his Metagross has a higher chance of killing something than my Dragonite, as long as his Metagross is alive, basically. So I basically have to lead... I cannot really lead defensively against the, the Metagross because I don't have a good defensive answer. So this time I have to lead offensively. So we determine the threats, determine which situation you desire and what you want to avoid. I want to get as many Dragon Claws off as possible against my opponent. However, I do not want his Metagross coming in for free and clicking Ice Punch on my Gliscor, for example, uh, for free on, on Switch. So, because Metagross actually lives in Earthquake for my Gliscor. 1v1, my Gliscor will lose to the Metagross. But I can only lead with my only offensive option that threatens the Metagross. Now let's see how this goes. He, lead, he does indeed lead up with the Metagross, I lead up with my Dragonite. And I'm not predicting here. I'm clicking that fire punch. And this player indeed had the ice punch. So my Gliscor would have died if I let off with Gliscor, for example. Because if I try to outmaneuver him, he can switch up attacks. However, this way, 
with the multi skill, I know I live the attack. And now Metagross is weakened, which makes my Weeball stronger, which makes my Dragonite stronger if I need to click Extreme Speed later on, for example. But this is why I chose to go with a more offensive lead, of course. Uh, it, it is an offensive lead, but it is to counter, counter his offensive threat, basically. Also, applying these steps, because let's say he let up with... If he led with something else that could have threatened, threatened me, maybe superior, right, with um, Glare. I could always bring in my Weezing against it. Um, if I don't want to get Glared. Against his elements, if I don't want to take the Draco Meteor or whatever, I can bring in my Empoleon. Like, we already de determined how we are going to defensively answer our opponent here. So, in that case... Um, Basically, step 6 would have been covered if he let off with anything else. But this is the situation we wanted to avoid. Now, this example, um, this is one of for one of the future games. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's a bit annoying that the game plan is on screen, but... Um, as you guys can see, um, his opponent... His team has a Gallade, my team has a Gallade, and now we have to identify the threats right. Right off the bat, my Gallade is such a big threat to him. His only resist is um, Psycho Cut. Because uh, he, he only has one resist to Psycho Cut being the Magnezone. The others don't resist the attack. Uh, but Magnezone is an offensive Pokemon in most cases, right? So he, every time he comes in on, Magnezone, uh, on Psycho Cut, he cannot do it again. However, my Gallade doesn't have the damage to kill Gyarados, Rotom, and his Garchomp from full HP. So I cannot lead off with him, because they will kill me in return. However, Gallade is still a huge threat if he gets to attack for free. So I want to look for those opportunities uh, to get in Gallade and click Psycho Cut. Um, another threat is going to be my Weavile, of course, because it outspeeds his whole team, even Magnuson with a Choice Scarf. His only resistances are... The Rotom Wash, which can be defensive, of course. And the Magnezone, which is an offensive Pokemon, so he cannot take too many of these Icicle Spears. So Weavile is also a big threat whenever I get to, to bring it in. However, the Rotom does wall me really well, so I cannot lead up with the Weavile. But it's good to know that he's an offensive threat whenever I get to attack for free. For example, if I can get it in against Weavile, uh, against uh, Gallade, Amoongus, or Garchomp. Uh, my Scissor doesn't do that much. Garchomp is also an, a, quite an offensive threat. Even though this is a bulky Garchomp, it doesn't lose 1v1 against this whole team. Just, it doesn't lose 1v1 versus Magnezone. It doesn't lose 1v1 versus Gyarados necessarily because I can Toxic him. I don't die to Ice Fang. I'm faster than Gallade. Can Earthquake in return. I can Toxic the Rodom. Um, I can set up Rocks versus Amoongus. The only 1v1 I would really lose is against this Garchomp. If he leads up with Garchomp. So, basically, I decided here, okay, Garchomp has the best match matchup versus his team. My goal is to get up rocks. That's what I want to do. What I want to avoid is him going for rocks. However, I know I can safely switch into Garchomp because... Step 2. Determine how we are going to defensively answer his Pokemon. His Gyarados. I, if my Mandibus is at full HP, I can always deal with him. Because I can fall play, I don't get to it KO'd. Um, his Garchomp, my Mandibus can always come in, it doesn't care about Draco Meets here, it doesn't care about Dragon Claw, and I can debug his rocks away, foul play in return. His Rotom Watch, I do have Garchomp which can take two Hydro Pumps and Toxic him, and basically wear him down. His Magnezone, Garchomp can take two Flash Cannons, and threaten him with Earthquake, while I can find an opportunity to get up with rocks. Mandibus also doesn't die to a Thunderbolt from full HP. So that's good to know. Among Us, gonna be a bit annoying, but I can switch into my Garchomp to get up Stealth Rock. I can switch into Mandibus to get off a U-turn and uh, scare him with Brave Bird. Against his Galato, whenever he comes in, um, whenever he comes in, um, he might be able to claim a Pokemon if he has the right moveset. set. So that's a that's a huge threat. So I also want to answer. Basically, what I don't want in this game is this Galate um, picking up a kill on the first turn. So I want to lead up in a way that doesn't allow Gallade to pick up a kill. This is why I led up with Garchomp. Because Garchomp, he, he, he can kill me of course, but he's going to take a lot of damage in return. And that's going to be his biggest threat gone as well. 
but let's see how I lead up this game, right? Because we we, we we determined the threats, uh, we determined the situation we want to avoid. The Glay doing a lot of damage to him, and we want to get up rocks ourselves as well, if possible. And if both situations happen, I can Earthquake to get the value on the Glade. And I can, and we already decided that we punish the Glade by going into Guard Chomp. And in case it's the unfavorable situation would be if he leads off with his Guard Chomp. But we already determined that we get in, um, we get in Mandy Buzz. If he, if he Stealth Rocks, we debug. If, if he goes for the attack, we can Roost, for example. So, he leads off with the Guard Chomp. And it's, it's a speed tie which I can win. However, it's not worth taking it for, for me. Because he gets more value if I go for rocks and he clicks Draco Meteor. So I decided to just go on Bus because if he clicks rocks, we just debug him away. And he decides to go for Draco Meteor and I lose very little HP. And he... I lose very little HP. So... Even though he got a more favorable lead, um, I still get out ahead because I considered what I wanted to happen and what I didn't want to happen. I didn't want him to destroy me with Glade, and um, I also considered if the lead is unfavorable, what I can do next. That's this example. I have another example here against the Trick Room team. So the threats on both sides are, you can see my team on the right, this is back from a from a stream in which I usually hide my moves. But my threats are... My threats... It's a bit more difficult because this was a bit of a stall team. A bit of a stall team, semi-stall team. Um, so my threats would be... Would be Weavile. Uh, if the Bronzong dies, because his only resistance to my Weavile is his Bronzong. And Weavile has super effect... His Ice type... Attacks are super effective against two of his Pokemon, and his Dark type attacks are effective against two of his Pokemon. So, my biggest threat would be the the, the Weavile, and then my Jellicent, which can taunt his whole team, and Willow Wisp, uh, the Garchomp, and the uh, Marowak, for example, outside of Trick Room. Uh, but his threats are Conkeldar, because under Trick Room, it's usually Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, which means that he has the coverage to defeat my defensive Pokemon under Trick Room. But that's under Trick Room, so he basically needs Trick Room first, and he needs his orb activated. So basically what I want to avoid is him going for Trick Room. But I don't have a way to avoid it because I don't have Taunt on my team. So I have to go for a way that I can punish him. Well, I don't have anything that really damages Bronzong, turn 1. So I have to punish him in another way. So in this way, I decided because my opponent didn't have... Um, didn't have Defog on his team. It doesn't look like he has a Defog on his team. Nothing can potentially use Defog. I decided to lead off with my Gliscor to stack spikes on him while he tries to set up Staldrug and Trick Room. So he's basically gonna waste a turn using Trick, trick Room while I'm getting up while I'm getting up three spikes. And that way I weaken his team every time. So because he trick rooms immediately. And I just get do free spike turns. And that's basically how I punished him going for Trick Room because th these spikes, he cannot he cannot remove them. And I had Protect on this um, on this Glide Score. But that would have been fine too. Protect basically um, uh, selling out a Trick Room turn. But let's say he let off anything else, right? Uh, Marowak, I defensively answer with my Skarmory. This clubs I defensively answer with my Clefable, because this clubs doesn't touch me at all. I can set up on him. Um, if Gliscor has his orb activated, I this clubs is just a Pokemon I can use spikes against. I can toxic him too. Bronzong, I defensively answer with my Gliscor, set up spikes. Defensively answer with my Skarmory, set up Stealth Rock. Garchomp, depending on the set of course, but I can defensively answer with my Garchomp plus Gliscor. Or Jellicent. On Calder, I defensively answer with my Jellicent plus Skarmory. Reuniclus, that one is the biggest threat actually. Um, however, outside of Trick Room, he doesn't really do much because it's usually um, Trick Room 3 attacks. Meaning that it, me leading with Gliscor 
against Reuniclus, I just Earthquake him, damage him, damage him, him because Reuniclus on Trick Room usually doesn't have any recovery moves. So every damage I get on him is is permanent, basically. Because um, it's usually Life Warp with uh, three attacks. Um, so in the most unfavorable position, he can lead Conkelder, but he doesn't have... The, um, he doesn't have the Flame Orb activated, and like I said, I do have Jellicent, which can come in, right? And I actually I have Taunt on Jellicent, but some Browns run White Herb or Mental Herb, which means I cannot avoid it, so I wanted to punish him. And a guaranteed way of punishing him going for Trick Room was obviously these spikes. Um, lastly, against this Rain team. So what I what I didn't want to happen is him getting up. Uh, rain and uh, getting in his sweepers for free his rain sweepers for free so the way to avoid it is me deciding to lead up with Garchomp because if we look at the threats right if we look at the threats if we look at the threats my threats are definitely my Garchomp my Rotom too Rotom and Garchomp are huge threats to him because if the um, if the Seismito dies, he has no immunity or resist to Volt Switch. Garchomp, his only resist to Draco is Scizor, which is going to take a lot from Earthquake. And Mian Xiao as well, his only resistance to Close Combat is Pelipper plus Toxic Croak. And his only resistance to Air Slash from Togix is going to be the Kabutops. So I definitely have a bunch of threats. However, under Rain... I don't deal well with Kingdra. I don't deal well with Kabutops who just set up Swords then. So, um, I want the situation I want to avoid is him getting up Rain and getting up one of his Rain Sweepers. But that's something I cannot avoid because I don't have any weather of myself to remove it. And it's an ability I cannot stop. So, I have to punish him for setting up the Rain. So, I decided to lead off with the, with the Garchomp. To punish him going for rain because um this is something you must have already have done but i defensively answer kabutops with my amungus i defensively answered toxicroak with my dogekiss i defensively answer his scissor with my amungus i defensively answer his king Tri in combination with my rodon plus miensha i defensively answer his seismitoad with my amungus I defensively answer his Pelipper with my Rotom. So, if if he for some reason leads up with anything else, first off, there is nothing on his team that threatens my uh, Garchomp. Only if it's if it's a Choice Scarf Pelipper. But that means he only has five rain turns because all the other Pokemon are slower than me outside of rain, which I threaten with Draco Meteor in return. So in this case, I just throw up a Draco Meteor. turn one and he decided he decided to go for his situation that i didn't want to happen right him getting up rain and, and getting uh kings or, or kabutops in for free however i punished this pelipper so he took the draco meteor and he took a u-turn as well a rough skin so that pelipper is super low so the next time he comes in um the next time he comes in he still has to everything on my team can basically kill him however I didn't avoid the situation because he can still get up one of his rain sweepers. However, I did punish the Spelliper, his rain setter. And had he switched, something would have taken a lot of damage from the Draco Meteor. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, those are basically uh, the examples. A bit of a long video with um, a lot of examples. Let me change the screen. <laughs> Let me change the screen. I hope you guys um, thought this video was helpful. Uh, hopefully he gave you guys some guidelines you can follow and definitely definitely figure out your own way of of uh approaching these kind of things but yeah hopefully this is helpful like i said i just make up these theories on my own um come up with terms as certain terms as well some terms are known in the community though um smogon uh talks about this but yeah it's 
like I said, it's it's difficult explaining this. I mean, just it's it's in my head, but uh, I have to translate it in a way that it's easier for people to understand as well. So hopefully, I did a good job, guys. If you thought this video was helpful, then consider hitting that like button, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more, leave a comment down below, and yeah, guys, um, join our Discord server. Check me out on Patreon. Um, I have coaching. I have a PvP course you can follow to improve in these kind of things. And I also have team building support. And like always, guys, my teams, my PvP teams are going to be on Patreon as well. Peace out, guys. Have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you next time.